had a great time in the class, and, um, and then I, pastor took us for a tour through the buildings, and you know, some of the, uh, some of the places in the buildings were, were really uh, familiar, and other places have been changed completely. But you know, progress um, means change, and I am just so glad to see this church changing uh, for the good of God to see this church moving forward. You don't change the message. You never change the message. But you, sometimes you have to change facilities. Sometimes you have to change procedures. Sometimes you have to change methodology. And uh, you know, you folks, uh, you're, you're primed to grow uh, with, a, with a wonderful past and a very significant presence. Now you have a glorious future. Yes, uh, I'm so proud that my mother and my father were here to, uh, to answer God's call in 1956. And in 1956, in June of that year, uh, we met in Kelly Grade School. And uh, it was just a portable building. And I, I, I'm not sure where Kelly School was located. I, I think it was over by Seneca and 31st, along in there somewhere. And... Um, and then uh, after that in uh, the hops uh, garage uh, for a while and then in the greasy garage on seneca which is now a battery place and uh, and then finally this property opened up and uh, you know uh, god used my father to get the first building up and judy and i came right after bible college we were young and but you know what? We just really, really wanted to serve God. And uh, God gave us all kind of opportunities. I remember one time uh, my father was ill, very ill. And uh, I was to go ahead and just lead the church. And I was just very young, right out of Bible college. And I just didn't know what to do, but I did everything I could do. Daisy, uh, Daisy is here. And uh, I remember when her husband, Al, uh, Alfred High was electrocuted and killed underneath their house trying to fix something. And it was my responsibility to go to the hospital and tell Daisy and the four children, your husband is gone. Your father is gone. And I was just a young man in ministry, and I, I so well remember that instance. I remember uh, God, God using us uh, to be able to bring some help. Uh, some compassion, some comfort uh, to, to a family. And to think that Daisy is still a part of this church today, uh, that is just really phenomenal. And then I, I, I have seen so many others here today that, that I have known, that Judy and I, we've connected with, and it, it's always good to see old friends. It's great to make new friends. I got acquainted with your pastor a number of years ago. And uh, Judy and I fell in love with, with uh, Bruce and, and uh, Leslie years ago. And, you know, God has honored their faithfulness. God has blessed them. And uh, to see now this, uh, this facility, to see how God has used you guys. And uh, Leslie, good night, you can sing. Uh, I, uh, my goodness, I, I knew that you were a good singer, but that... Uh, and then, Brother Schusler, good to see you again, and oh my goodness, we could go just on and on here. Uh, uh, I remember seeing so many of you here, but God has changed. You know, there's a lot of people that have gone on to be with the Lord, and uh, I remember too, I started to tell you that when my father was just very ill, uh, that it was my responsibility, and, and uh, not only did we lose Alfred High at that time, but finances were tough. And in those days, we had just uh, taken out a mortgage on this piece of property. And I remember the, the, the property payment was $155 a month. Now, that doesn't sound like much today. <laughs> oh, but listen, back in 1958 or so, that was a lot of money. And we had to pray down that ground payment every month because it just was not in the finances. And I remember uh, month after month how the church had to struggle. 
and how the church struggled to be able to, uh, to make that payment. And then I remember with my father sick in the hospital, and I remember that the payment was due, it had to be made, and we were a stickler in those days on paying our bills and paying them on time, and Dad taught me that. So, you know, the ground payment had to be made. We prayed, and oh, we prayed. And you know, I went to the mailbox, the mailbox was out here on the street, and it was the old-fashioned mailbox, you know, the middle thing, you pull the thing, and um, I reached in there and got the mail. And there was just a stack of mail, I brought it into the little office that we had, and I laid it all out on the table. Pastor Bruce, let me tell you something. There was an envelope in there that looked a little strange because it was handwritten, and there was no postage stamp on it. So I knew that somebody had come by and just placed this envelope in the box. And you, you know, you're always a little skeptical of a pencil handwritten envelope with no postage stamp. And it's kind of thick. You think, oh my, somebody is really upset. <laughs> and so I opened the envelope but you know what fell out of it? Tens and twenties. There was exactly a hundred and fifty-five in that envelope. God here at Glenville. And God had once again answered the prayer. And you know, as just a minister, I just knew that God had something special planned for this area, for this piece of property, for this area. Not only for then, but I, in my heart, God knew what he was doing, that there would be something special, very special that would happen on this piece of property. And here we are, 50 years later, Pastor Bruce Thomas is leading this church, and my, what a great facility what a great people. Listen, you folks, you've got a glorious future ahead of you. And I'm so glad I'm here. Listen, I love Glenville. I want you to know that. If my father was alive today, and if he had the same privilege that I would have of being here, he would love it. He would love it. If my father was alive today, he would have been 100 years old this last Friday. In 1969, my mother, and we'll get to the sermon in just a, just a moment. <clears throat> I'm supposed to preach, okay, and I will. Uh, but uh, in, in 1969, my mother was diagnosed with cancer. The cancer was located right underneath the skull right next to the brain, and it was like fingers all through, it was inoperable. Doctors gave her maximum six months to live. And, you know, we all prayed, the church prayed. A lot of people prayed for her. And she got well. She stayed well. Listen, we just had her memorial service this this last year she was 98 years old when she passed she outlived my father she outlived her friends she outlived a lot of people and had a sharp mind right up until the end and oh my goodness god just used my mother and my father here listen take your bible with me please and turn with me, please, to Ephesians chapter 3. Here's a marvelous passage of Scripture talking about legacy. I want to talk to you today about going for the best in your life. On Tuesday, there's going to be a pastor's meeting. Pastor Thomas has asked me to speak, and I'm going to be preaching on leaving a lasting legacy on Tuesday. This morning, we're going to just see what God wants all of us to know. We're, we're going to see what God wants us to hear today from Ephesians chapter 3. And we're going to talk about going for the best in your life. And so let's just take a look at the scripture. Uh, we, we will, 
uh, take a look at it ephesians 3 and verse 16 that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man in other words he will empower you he will god will empower you with inner strength and then he says that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye that you being rooted and grounded in love so in other words christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him and then he talks about your roots how they go down into god's love and they will keep you strong verse 18 may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of christ verse 19 which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of god verse 20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us going for the best in your life you know in our quest to improve the quality of our lives we plan and we work we strive to do more and we strive we all want the best in our lives don't we we live in an average world you know that everything is average uh, you know we have average home prices uh, there's the Dow Jones average uh, we have average grade scores in school we have um, average production levels uh, in the workplace uh, we have average temperatures uh, we live in an average world uh, doing a little uh, research on this I found that the average third grader uh, reads 150 words a minute and the average adult reads 250 words a minute um, and I found this out too that the a talking about average men speak 125 words a minute women speak a thousand no, no that's not right <clears throat> I'm in trouble already <clears throat> but women do speak 150 words per minute and auctioneers speak 400 words a minute hey the average person texting now I'm way behind I mean I text I'm not this fast but the average texting is 40 words a minute your pastor he texts all the average income in the year 2011 for a household with people age 50 is $79,000 a year. That's the average. But if you're only 25 years old, hey, hey you got to live with your parents or you got to do something because you're averaging 27 per household. The life expectancy for a, uh, for a man is 76 years average, and for a woman, its average is 81 years. We live in an average world. But I don't think that Christians ought to settle for mediocrity. I don't think that you and I as a believer in Jesus Christ that we ought to settle for the average. My goodness, we've got families. And we've got children. We've got grandchildren. Let's be the best for them. Some of you guys are in school and you're trying to learn a trade or you're going through grade school, junior high or high school, and you desire to excel, you desire to achieve, don't settle for average. Today we seek happiness. We want better marriages. We want better homes. We want better families. So let's not settle for the average. Let's go for the best. And let's go for the best in our lives. Now, in these verses, we are taught how we can be fulfilled in our lives, and we are taught here how we can go for the very best in our life. First of all, let me take a look, and let's all take a look here at verses 16 and 17. If you really want the very best in your life, you're not willing to settle for the average, you're not willing to settle for mediocrity, you want the very best in your life, ask, listen to me, 
God for inner strength. Now that's what the Word of God teaches us here. You know, we need inner strength. Verse 16 talks about that. And uh, we, we know here, as the, as the Word of God says, in verse, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. We need that inner strength. We need that strength on the inside. That only comes through Jesus Christ. And so you look at this and you realize that the body, body it, it grows older. I was telling, telling Harold Ricky a little while ago, good night. He and I used to play basketball here together on a church basketball team when we were both in our 20s. Good Lord, we'd have a hard time to do it today. Time gets away. Fifty years, fifty years, uh, kind of uh, uh, put some of those things aside for us. The body is weak; it deteriorates, in fact, and the body does die. Uh, the Bible says in Second Corinthians four sixteen, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. The body are dying our spirits are being renewed day by day even though the body may get old even though the body gets sick even though the body uh, crumbles even though the body deteriorates yet we need that inner strength and there is no correlation because you can have a weak body and have great strength on the inside because you get that strength from the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm so glad for that. And you need to ask God for inner strength. Uh, a, really do on you. Uh, Bob Hope says, I don't feel old. I don't feel anything until noon. Then it's time for my nap. And I thought that was a pretty good quote. Um, remember George Burns? Uh, well, uh, he said this, the secret of a good sermon is to have a good beginning and a good ending and to have the together as possible so i thought that was pretty neat um you know the great theologian phyllis diller <laughs> she said this maybe it's true that life begins at 50 but everything else starts to wear out fall out or spread out <laughs> and it, she's pretty good Billy says, by the time a man is wise enough to walk his step, he's too old to go anywhere and someone comes to us without effort is old age yeah the body is weak and the body deteriorates but you can have that strength on the inside and when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you accept him as your personal Savior and you live for him and you serve him let me tell you something there is that inner strength that inner strength that every one of us needs to have a good family to have a good marriage to have a good income, to have a good experience of life, to have good relationships. You need to have that inner strength. Age has nothing to do with it. Your, your crumbling, deteriorating body has nothing to do with it. You need that inner strength. Listen, let's go for the best in our life. And if you want to go for the very best in your life, you need to ask God for inner strength. Now, uh, there's a reason for that. Um, you need to refresh yourself spiritually every day. And uh, I, I, I jotted down just five reasons why you need to do this, why you need to ask God for that inner strength. You need to refresh yourself spiritually every day. First of all, to counteract discouragement. Yeah, we get to the point and the place in our lives where, you know, we can get discouraged. You need to understand that God is at work in your life. Another reason, and that is to counteract bitterness and anger. Sometimes bitterness, sometimes anger just gets in the way. Bitterness and anger can take over and just destroy a person's life. Um, you refresh yourself spiritually every day. Another reason, and that is to give strength and courage. Sometimes it's just so depressing to hear things in the news and you know, we uh, all kinds of bad and pathetic things 
and you need strength you need courage so you need to refresh yourself spiritually every day you need to ask god for that inner strength you need that strength you need to refresh yourself from the word of god refresh yourself by participating in a church like this in a class small group or whatever and uh, or maybe participating and being here in worship being under this under the ministry of of your pastor is so important you refresh yourself spiritually also uh, to, uh, to counteract disappointment to counteract uh disappointment you know sometimes you you get so disappointed and it's you just need your strength i found something the other day that i really like this is one of my very very favorite stories a woman received a phone call that her daughter was was very sick with a fever and she left work and she stopped by the drugstore for some medication for her daughter and upon returning to her car she finds that that she had locked her keys in the car and she had to get home to her sick daughter and uh, she didn't know what to do she purchased medication she prepared she she needed to get home in a hurry because her daughter was really, really sick. So she calls home to the babysitter and is told that her daughter is sick, really getting worse. And the babysitter suggests using a coat hanger to try to unlock the car door. So the woman finds an old rusty coat hanger on the ground, almost as though someone else had locked their keys in their car. And uh, so she, she looks at that coat hanger and says, you know, I don't know how to do this. So she bowed her head. She asked God for help. And she prayed. She says, Lord, I need help. Well, an old rusty car pulled up, driven by a dirty, greasy, bearded man with a biker skull rag on his head. And the woman thought, great, God, this is what you sent to help me. But she was desperate. And now she was thankful. The man got out of his car and asked if he could help. She said, yes. She says, my daughter's home very, very sick, and i got to get this medicine to her. I must get home to her. Please, can you help me use this coat hanger to unlock my car? He says, sure. So he walks over to the car, and in seconds, he has the car opened. She hugged the man, and through her tears, she says, thank you. Thank you so much. You are a very, very nice man. And the man replied later, I ain't a nice man. I just got out of the car theft. <laughs> the man again. <laughs> and she cried out loud. She says, thank you God for sending me a professional. <laughs> Sometimes we get in those predicaments Sometimes we get in those positions where we don't know which way to go, which way to turn, and it seems that there's light at the end of the tunnel. It seems as though that everything is coming down on us. Listen, that's the time you need to have inner strength. That's the time where you need to have something on the inside that's tough. That's the time you have to have something on the inside that's resilient. That's the time you've got to have something on the inside that is lasting, that is eternal, life-saving, and it only comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you know him? Have you accepted him? And when you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, you know that there is something on the inside of you we can call it a something, but let me tell you, it's the person of the Holy Spirit who can give you that inward strength. Listen, you need to refresh yourself spiritually every day. And there's one more reason I'm going to point it out, and that is to enable us to serve the Lord. Some people say, I could never do this. I could never, I could never serve. I could never teach. I could never be on the praise team. I could never be uh, used of God. Quit using the word never and start saying, God, will open doors Let's move on do you want the best in your life 
if you want the very best in your life and not willing to settle for average, not willing to settle for mediocrity. Ask God for that inner strength, but secondly, you understand God's love. You've got to understand God's love, and you take a look at verse number 18, that he may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. What does it mean to comprehend? Well, it means to understand God's love more than just to know something, but it literally means to lay hold of something so as to make it your own. Understand it to the point that it has a deep impact upon who you are as a person. It's all about understanding God's love for us. And so we see the limitless dimensions of God's love. Is it possible to describe God's love? Oh. I, I don't know how you do that. All I know is that God loves me and that God loves me enough that his only son Jesus Christ to be my Lord and Savior I know that I know that God loves me because he gave me Judy I know that God loves me because he's given me so many good friends in life but here he describes it what a marvelous verse it is that we might know the, the breadth of love listen the breadth of love that means that God's Love, it's wide enough to encompass all time. Able to reach all people. Last Sunday morning, I preached in Manila in the Philippines. And to see those people that are in poverty, to see some of those people that are strung out on drugs, to see some of those people, some of those young adults that, that have been gangbangers, and thieves to see them come to Jesus Christ is, is just so phenomenal because, why? because God's love is so broad the breadth of God's love it encompasses all mankind able to forgive all people able to forgive all sins able to meet all needs furthermore we see the love of God not only the breadth of it, the length of it long enough to last for all eternity his love is unconditional never ending hey what about the height of love it's high enough to take us to heaven what about the depth of love it's deep enough to reach the most despicable person to rescue the lowest sinner the depth of love listen the world has its own brand of love which is very self-centered which is very narrow which is very shallow and it's conditional and temporary but to understand God's love listen if you want to go for the very best in your life you've got to ask God for inner strength but by all means look at God's love how much he cares for you how much he loves you and understand that Finally, let me close out with verse 19. If you want the very best for yourself in life, you need to depend, listen to me, you need to depend upon God's power. And you take a look at verse 19 and 20 in our text in Ephesians 3, 19, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Listen, if you're filled with the fullness of God, you've got strength, you have power, don't you? Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To know the love of Christ, you depend upon God's power in your life. I read one day years ago in the Tournament of Roses in California on New Year's Day, beautiful float suddenly sputtered and quit I mean this was on national TV New Year's parade in California and this beautiful big float just suddenly stopped held up the whole parade why because it was out of gas 
The amusing thing about it was that this float represented the Standard Oil Company. The Standard Oil Company with its just a minute up toward this thing. The Standard Oil Company with with its right. I'm gonna mess up. The Standard Oil Company with its with, with its vast uh, resources. Its truck was out of gas. You and me, as a born again child of God, we have all the resources of God's power, and so many times we don't we don't hook into it. We don't depend upon God's power in our life. We can have God's power. It's ours. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there's a there are step by step by steps that you take to grow, to develop, to mature. And as you do that, you begin to learn, yes, God's power is my power. And the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells within you. And I want you to know that we can have God's power. You hear the Apostle Paul. He, he, he was overwhelmed. Let me tell you, he was overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed with the presence of God in his life. Paul seems to want to use every word possible here to convey to us the vastness of God's power as, a, as, as, as found here in the person of Jesus Christ. So we are overwhelmed by his power. He makes up his own word phrasing. He is so caught up in the bigness and the awesomeness of God. He stacks these words on each other in an attempt to say God is not just big, but God is big and terrific. I mean, he just makes up these words and he stacks them. In other words, Paul is morphing all these words together to make his point. So he talks about God's power, we could say, in our own language, that it's breathtaking, that it's formidable. God's power is magnificent, majestic, overwhelming. God's power is striking, stunning, wonderful, fantastic, supernatural, astounding, immense, marvelous, phenomenal, terrific, tremendous, astonishing, mighty, and all-powerful. The power that we have. Paul was saying that God is incredibly incredible, extravagantly extravagant, awesome awesome and in worship we sing so much about the awesomeness of almighty God he's powerful the word beyond here in this passage was used to describe a river above capacity or at flood stage uh, exceedingly beyond capacity God can do more uh, than our life could ever it's like the little boy uh, who was asked by his grandparents after he had seen the Grand Canyon in our state of Arizona how big the Grand Canyon was. As a kid, he knew how to describe the awesomeness of the Grand Canyon. He said it's way big. He said it's way, 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 it's way, way, way big all he could say you see beyond all we could ask or think more than our life could contain and more than our minds could ever imagine here is God's power if you want the very best of life if you want the very best in your life you need to depend upon God's power if God be for us who can be against us and this is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith and we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and great is he that is in you than he that is in the world and i can do all things through christ who strengthens me casting all your care upon him for he cares for you listen if you want the very best that god has for you you need that inner strength and then you need to also understand god's love but by all means, you need to depend upon God's power. 
there's nothing impossible for God. You could be here today without Christ as Savior and God's power is enough to save your soul and to help you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You're a believer. Let me tell you that God wants the very best for you. A little boy and his father were walking along a road one day and they came across a large stone. And the boy said to his dad, Dad, do you think if I use all my strength that I could move that rock? Dad said, well, if you can use all your strength, yeah, I'm sure you can do it. So the little boy began to push on the rock, and it was a little heavier than he thought it would be. Exerting himself as much as he could, he pushed and pushed, and the rock did not move. Discouraged, he said to his dad, Dad, you were wrong. I can't move it. The father placed his arm around the boy's shoulder and said, No, son, you didn't use all your strength. You didn't ask me to help. And so many times in our Christian life, we're up against it. We don't know which way to turn. There's no light at the end of the tunnel. And we say, I don't have the strength. Personally, we may not have the strength can depend upon God's power and he's the one that makes the difference. He's the one who wants to intercede your life and make a difference. And he wants you to have the very best of all. But you've got to depend on him. Bow your heads with me, please. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed, and we're Thomas told me that I would just go with what God leads me to do at this point. I really believe that it would be appropriate if we could sing a song in just a moment or at least have some musicians available and to give you an opportunity to meet some believers here today. We're talking about legacy and you look at the past and say it's wonderful. You look at the present and say it's really significant. And you look at the future and you say it's glorious, but you know you've got to put yourself in the future. You've got to put yourself on the line before God. And there may be some members of this church, some believers, and you say, I want the very best in my life. I want to go for the best in my life. I want to go for the very best that God has for this church. I want Glenville to move forward. I want Glenville to reach the lost for Christ. There may be some Christians here today you would just say, you know, I just want to come to the place of prayer. I want to go for the best. But I also want to challenge those of you today here. You say, I'm not a Christian. I'm not saved. I don't have Jesus as my Savior. I want Christ as my Savior. And I know that I cannot have the very best in my life without Christ. Say, I don't know what to do, but if you come and meet me here at the front, or if you come and meet Pastor Thomas here at the front, goodness, we'll pair you up with somebody who can just easily explain it to you and talk with you and pray with you. Would all of you stand, please, and let me pray with you as we stand. Let's all stand together and let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, I just pray that your Holy Spirit would do a special work in each of our lives. May we come to you humbly and say, Lord, I'm depending upon you. I want the very best that you have for me. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would take control in this service here today. Do your work, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's have some music, and while we, we do this, the opportunity is for you to slip out of your seat. Come to the place of prayer. Would you do that?
have responded to the invitation. I just kind of feel maybe we ought to just have one more verse of this song. And I'd like to ask you to bow your head with me in an attitude of prayer today. While your heads are bowed, perhaps there are decisions that need to be made in your life. And there could be those here today without Christ as Savior. And if you're here today without the Lord Jesus, I, I ask you to step forward. I ask you to come. And let us pray, let us, let us help you. All right, let's bow our heads and let's just sing one more.